Ants to Wire, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. BettingAngle.us, a free site. It is August the 5th, 2019. You know, one of the best things a boxing handicapper can do is to look at the age and the weight history of the fighters involved. Now, this Curtis Stevens whale Amatoso fight featured two guys in their mid 30s, right? Their mid 30s. Now, let me just point out I know heavyweights age more slowly than anyone else, right? You have heavyweights who are viable who are in their late 30s, early 40s. Right? Some of the heavyweight champions are already inching toward their mid-30s. Look at Deontay Wilder's age. Right? But other divisions don't age as gracefully. You see these guys and you realize that they're in the eighth or ninth innings of their careers. Right? Let's just be real. I don't care how good the guy looks in terms of keeping off body fat and stuff like that. There's more to aging than how you look. It involves your reflexes, and it involves how your body reacts. Now, my view is a minority view. You have a lot of people on the other side of the aisle, maybe most people, who will tell you differently. But I'm just telling you that as a fighter ages, if that fighter decides to lose weight, Right? If he's in his 30s, his punch resistance is going to plummet. It's going to drop precipitously. Right? I know trainers want you to believe that cutting weight is not going to impact a fighter. And I know there are many people out there who believe that if they're naturally the bigger man in the ring, Right on the night of the fight, at the weigh-in, people can starve themselves and make weight. But if on the night of the fight, they weigh more than the other guy, a lot of people feel that they have the advantage. I'm just here to tell you that that's not the case. For exhibit number one, I want people to look at this Curtis Stevens fight. Right? If you are cutting weight and you're an older fighter and you're fighting at a lower weight class, your punch resistance is going to be weakened. Understand, former heavyweight champion Chris Bird, and let's remember, Chris Bird beat Vitaly Klitschko. Klitschko couldn't handle his upper body movement. Right, Klitschko is winning the fight, but Klitschko tears his rotator cuff. Couldn't find Bird. Right, Chris Bird, who was the heavyweight champion, was better at heavyweight than he was later in his career when he dropped down a weight class to try to prolong his career. I would argue that fighters like Anthony Mundine, a fighter who I thought was extremely talented, hurt himself badly by dropping weight classes as he got older, right? You're not the bigger guy on fight night. You're the weaker guy on fight night. So what I want people to do, and we have the resources of the net here, you can actually look up prior fights. You can look up a fighter's biography here online. What I want people to do is to look carefully at Curtis Stevens' record here. Right? He started his career in 2004 as a light heavyweight, folks. He weighed 174 pounds for that fight. Light heavyweight. Right? His second fight, he weighed 180 pounds. 180. Well, since 2013, Stevens has decided to fight as a middleweight. Right? I'm sure the logic was, hey, I'll be the naturally bigger man in the ring, right? A lot of people have this philosophy. Sean Porter, look at his weight history. Bernard Hopkins, 
look at his weight, his first fight, and where he fought at after that. Right? Now, all I'm saying is, let's be aware of the age. In your 20s, you can lie to your body. Right? Curtis Stevens can say to his light, heavyweight body, and I don't care how tall he is, right? The guy started at light, heavyweight for a reason. Fought multiple fights there, right? Second fight's above light, heavy, for crying out loud. Right? Curtis Stevens can say to himself and can listen to some trainer who says, hey, man, if you lose the weight and keep that light heavyweight power on you, that 174 pound first fight, 180 pound second fight power on you, you could decimate middleweights. Now, in your 20s, that works. Your body is starved, or maybe your body is starved the day before and the day of the weigh-in, and your body bounces back. You get hit on the chin, you're taking shots, right? I'm just telling you, <laughs> I'm just telling you that as you get older, that dynamic changes. So we get to the fight this weekend. Right? Curtis Stevens decides he's going to fight for the first time as a pro at 154 pounds. 154. Folks, he had never fought at 154 before as a professional prize fighter. It's even worse than that. The 20s are in his rearview mirror by a few years. Curtis Stevens now is in his mid-30s, right? Think about the weight cut. I'm sure Anthony Mundine can relate. He starts at 174, and this weekend, he fought at 154. 30-pound weight cut. Even bigger than that when you consider the heaviest he weighed in a fight, right? 180. So, I'm not saying lucky boy Amatoso doesn't hit hard. He has a greater than 60% KO ratio, right? But understand, he was the smaller man in the fight. He had been fighting as a welterweight, then had moved up to 154 in the past, right? Well, the bottom line is Curtis Stevens, as weight-drained as he was, had no punch resistance, right? He looked as bad as, let's say, Kovalev looked in his first fight against Alvarez. In fact, an argument can be made he looked worse than that. Stevens was down in the first round. He was down in the second round. He was down in the third round. What was the 34-year-old doing fighting at that light a weight? It makes no sense to me. I know trainers have techniques to drain you of water and stuff like that. I know there are people like Danny Jacobs, for example, who squeezes himself into 160 pounds. Right? Mike Lee before his fight against Caleb Plant. And by the way, that's another example of what I'm talking about. Mike Lee, a light heavyweight, decided he was going to take a title shot at 168. Right? Like Curtis Stevens, he showed up, had no punch resistance, got stopped early, hit the canvas multiple times. They asked Mike Lee if he would feel comfortable at 168 before the fight. And Mike Lee was very honest. He said, look, I only have to weigh 168 at the time of the weigh-in. So, you're a prospective gambler. Right? Just going forward, you see a fighter who's in his 30s who decides he's going to lose weight, right? Someone puts the bright idea in his head that, hey, you're the bigger man. You lose weight and make weight at the weigh-in, on fight night, 
you'll be the bigger man with more power and a bigger punch. Right? That's not the way the world works. Certainly not for people in their 30s. Right? You get away with that at 22, 23, 24, 25, it starts to impact you. As you turn 31, 32, 33, right? Understand the implications of what I'm saying. If you look at a fighter, let's say Saul Alvarez, let's name a big name. And suddenly Alvarez starts to have an interest in fighting heavier fighters, right? There's the Rocky Fielding fight, right? Fielding didn't call out Alvarez, right? Alvarez wanted that fight. Alvarez goes up to 168. He fights Rocky Fielding. He comes back down to fight Danny Jacobs. Just look at the weigh-in, folks. Look at the lack of body fat on Canelo. You see that at a weigh-in. You know the guy's last fight was taking place at eight pounds higher. And you have to say to yourself, wow, this guy really squeezed himself into 160 now. Maybe those great memories I have of him fighting at 160 and earlier in his career when he was younger at 154 and 147. Maybe those memories are now a thing of the past. Then, of course, you hear that Saul Alvarez was negotiating the fight Sergei Kovalev at 175. Right? 175. At a certain point, you have to say to yourself, you know, if he loses weight to drop back down, like Cal Brook did after the, his fight against Golovkin. If he loses weight to drop back down to 160, given that he's older now, right, is it going to impact his punch resistance? Is it going to impact his stamina? So let me say this. I congratulate Lucky Boy Amatoso on beating Curtis Stevens. I didn't have a bet on the fight. I didn't make a video before the fight. But understand, I had seen Stevens over the course of his career get hit much harder than that in multiple fights. Right? Stevens used to call himself a chin checker. Right? Stevens' history involves some wars where he's landing big shots and the other guy's landing big shots. Right? Now, I know some trainer someplace said, hey, be the big man in the fight. You're fighting a guy who's really a welterweight. You're fighting a guy who might be now a 154-pounder, but we know between us that you're really a middleweight and bigger. You should be able to push this guy around the ring. Right? Again, that's not the way the world works. An older, bigger guy loses weight to make weight. Think Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. when he fought Canelo at 164. You remember that disastrous fight. Right? A bigger man who's rough and tumble when he's bigger loses weight. In his 30s, to fight some guy who is more natural at the weight that they're fighting at. And that bigger man might find that he has no power. He has no reflexes. He can't take a punch. What amazed me with the knockdowns in the Curtis Stevens fight is I'd see Amatoso hit him with a decent looking punch. And then Stevens would hit the canvas like he was hit by Deontay Wilder. You know, you saw him on the cat, you know, he would fall back and his feet would come up and you were thinking, whoa, wait a moment, off that punch? Then you thought, wow, is, is this Curtis Stevens? So pay attention. Again, 34 years old, which is where Lucky Boy Amatoso is and is, which is where Stevens is, right? The matchmaker made sure not to have these guys against some young lion here. Right? At 34 years old, 
losing weight to fight at a weight class where you've never fought before, to me, is perilous. Let me also say, too, just to some other fighters out there, right? Um, I get the feeling you have an epidemic in the sport, an epidemic of guys fighting in the wrong weight class. What would be so bad about Callum Smith, who's 6'3", moving up to fight at 175? Right, Callum, you're getting older. Not only that, Kovalev looked vulnerable in some fights. Right? That first Alvarez fight, my goodness. <laughs> Kovalev looked absolutely finished. I know the Andre Ward fight had some low blows. Fair enough. Right? I'll nod to the Kovalev community on that. But wow, Kovalev did look disoriented at the end of that fight, right? Couldn't grab Andre, couldn't clinch Andre. At one point, it looked like he was sitting on a rope. Let's just say he didn't handle adversity well. Now, given a possible opening at 175, Anthony Yard's going to see if it's there, right? I'm shocked that a guy like Callum Smith is continuing to starve himself to make 168 pounds. This reminds me of how Billy Joe Saunders used to starve himself to make 160 pounds. Guys, are you sure that that starvation strategy that works for guys at 25 works for you at 31 or 30. How do you know that you won't have more power when you gain weight? Let me say this. I remember the end of Bernard Hopkins's career at middleweight, right? He lost to Jermaine Taylor. We can debate that. We can debate that, right? But he lost against Jermaine Taylor. Looked like he had to take rounds off to go the distance. He didn't look fully healthy to me, his last few fights at middleweight. Then he gained weight. You remember that? Then he fights Antonio Tarver, the light heavyweight champ. And I'm just telling you, wow, it was as if... Hopkins had turned back the clock. He was just far too fast for Antonio Tarver, the light heavyweight champ. Right, Hopkins then goes on a career renaissance. Right, now granted, Hopkins kept it going so long, well into his 40s, right, that Hopkins then started to look at the end like he looked at the end of the run at middleweight. But the point is Hopkins, who started his career above middleweight, Right? Those extra calories seem to help him. Now, I look at fighters like Adrian Broner, who, again, to me, is an elite defensive fighter. Right? An elite defensive fighter. And I just wonder, why doesn't this guy trust his skills enough to gain weight to go to the next weight class? Right? If Danny Jacobs couldn't make the follow-up weigh-in for his Canelo fight, if Danny Jacobs looked as thin as he looked at the Canelo weigh-in just to make 160, given Danny's skills and given how flat Danny looked at times in that Canelo fight, right? Danny switches to Southpaw and Canelo looks unfazed. Let's just say Danny didn't look as inspired as Danny looked against Golovkin. Right? Given that Danny looked starved at 160, what's he afraid of going to 168? Folks, don't don't you have big paydays at 168? Right? What took Billy Joe Saunders so long to get to 168? Anyway, I think there's an epidemic in boxing. I think fighters in their 30s are kidding themselves when they pull stunts like the stunt Curtis Stevens tried to pull 
where he was going to come in lower than he'd ever come in in his mid-30s. And he thought that he'd still have the punch resistance. Right? Weights are such an illusion in boxing, too. That take of Curtis Stevens. I'm sure Stevens didn't weigh 154 48 hours before his weigh-in. Right? You don't even know how the starvation is going to hit your body because you're training at a heavier weight. Then you starve yourself. You make weight. Then, of course, you're rehydrating. And the myth is that the rehydration is going to bring your body back to 100%. Now, again, that's a young man's thing. At 25, okay, you're pulling it off. Right? At the end of Ricky Hatton's career, you saw where that got him, right? Your body just doesn't shed and then gain pounds as efficiently in your 30s as it does in your 20s. So for gamblers, right, if you hear that some guy in his mid-30s who's not a heavyweight, and keep in mind, heavyweights, they don't have to care too much about the scale. Right, Kanaki, Ariola, Andy Ruiz, they're not sweating as they're on the scale before the announced weight. Right, they're not sweating. These guys are healthy. Right, we're so accustomed to seeing unhealthy guys that when you see a guy with normal body fat, a professional athlete who's a boxer, right, a guy who. <laughs> has gone rounds, didn't both Ariola and Kanaki this weekend throw a record-setting number of punches and go 12 rounds. But yet, these are the guys who we look at in boxing and we say, man, this guy's out of shape. Then you look at a guy like Curtis Stevens. Looks great entering the ring. Hardly any body fat. Gets hit with some shots. Oh, my goodness, he's down. Can't recover. Gets off the canvas, still can't defend himself. The reflex is gone. The punch resistance gone to the point where you're saying, man, is this Curtis Stevens? Right? Boxing needs to rethink this. If you're a fighter in your 30s, you're a fighter in your 30s, and you're even thinking about losing 10 pounds just to make weight, I hope you reconsider Right? Let's name another guy. Golovkin. Think about it. He just signs with the zone. He wants another fight with Canelo. Right? They had scuffled over the middleweight title. You mean to tell me with a new promoter, with the you know, world looking at him saying, is Golovkin still on top of the game? With the fact that Golovkin's now in his later 30s. You mean to tell me that that fight was at a catch weight of 164 pounds, right? If a fighter can't do better than that in a very high-profile fight, that fighter to me is not a real middleweight. At this point, Golovkin himself needs to think about 168, right? Food for thought. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.